Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm a round keeper presently at uh, the NSBP area of Perth Zoo and that is the Native Species Breeding Program. We've got the Western Swamp Tortoise, which is what I'm here to talk to you about today. And it's critically endangered and it comes from Perth, so it's very specific to our region and just half an hour's drive out of the city, that's where the first tortoise was found and um, after a hundred years absence. Uh, some years ago, in fact when I was 15 years old, in 1953, um, I was uh, a very um, um, avid member of the WA Naturalist Club. Uh, I had a, a cousin in the Air Force Archie Gates and um, one day um, Arch and his wife Alwyn were coming down to uh, to visit and they saw this tortoise crossing the road in, on, in the Warbrook Road. Uh, immediately uh, Arch thought of me and oh let's catch this little fellow for Robert. So I took it along to the Naturalist Club. The Naturalist Club seniors looked at it and didn't have much to say except that um, it's probably one of the northern Kimberley tortoises. Second tortoise was found. Arch screamed to a stop in his car, picked up the second one and brought it down to my place. He said, here's a mate for your, your tortoise, Robert. So at the next naturalist club meeting, Robert goes along as per normal, but this time with two tortoises. And that's when all hell broke loose in the scientific <laughs> community. Because here is another tortoise, but not only old and worn, but sort of young, agile and but still exactly the same smiley face features and, and all of that. The, um, the, the people that have come out to further this, this whole environmental thing, I think it's totally wonderful. My name is Nikki Mitchell and I'm an Associate Professor in the School of Animal Biology at UWA. Well, the Western Swamp Tortoise is always going to be of interest to people, animal biologists, because it's so unique. It's, a, it's on its own branch of the evolutionary tree. It's got no close relatives. It's an unusual winter active tortoise that does things backwards, like nests backwards, uses its front legs rather than its hind legs. Um, it's a good looking animal, there's lots of good reasons we want to see it around, but you know, it's just a special animal and we know that one of the reasons that it's declining is, is our own interventions. It's changing to the groundwater, it's climate change, so it should be able to persist um, and we want to make sure we can ensure that it does. In the first year of my PhD I think I saw about five western swamp tortoises and it took, after spending an awful lot of time wandering around swamps looking for them, they're not an easy animal to study because they do not readily go into traps. And most of the time they're very good at hiding in uh, murky water or under vegetation in swamps. So I decided that if I was able to find out a bit about, or more about what they did, I'd have to uh, radio track them. Now at that stage, radio tracking was a very primitive science. These days you can buy off the uh, shelf radio transmitters for animals from half a dozen companies around the world then you could not do any of that. And so I, again, in the first year of my PhD, I spent a lot of time in an electronics lab trying to build transmitters that would uh, work on Western Swamp tortoises, noting that some of the time they were out in the dry land and some of the time they were underwater, which made designing a transmitter that little bit more difficult. Also couldn't be so heavy that, you, uh, that the weight would drown them. Um, this species, was identified over a hundred years ago and, um, and very little was known about it. So unless you get the, the research going into knowing a bit more about that animal, you're not going to know how you're going to feed it, how you're going to manage it through a, a season or through an entire year. 
uh, you know, unless you know that this species goes into a summer hibernation, what we call estivation, um, you're not going to do too well because you need to understand what is actually required to maintain the species. And research is what um, is, is where we head, you know, to, to understanding what these needs are. The Friends of the Western Swamp Tortoise is a community group. We have over a hundred members on our email database. We have a core committee of um, probably 20 people who uh, do things like revegetating the uh, areas that the Western Swamp Tortoise lives, um, releasing uh, hatchling tortoises once a year if the weather and climate is conducive, and um, generally raising awareness of the plight of the tortoise. In 2014, we released many more animals than we would normally because we had to hold back on last year. The conditions were totally unfavourable. So this year we had two releases and we went out to Twin Swamps on our initial release. We took 30 animals out there. The conditions were just fabulous. The water quality was really good and we, we could see that there were invertebrates in the water so there's a good food source and ideal conditions for our little hatchlings that have not known habitat like this before. We had the support of the Friends of the Western Swamp Tortoise and um, very enthusiastic youngsters and adults involved in that. And of course, we have our other stakeholder, Depaw principally, and the support of Gerald Cushling, who's uh, renowned for his expertise in the tortoises. We had our minister who was also able to release tortoises and he was um, most enthusiastic about this little creature. Um, this is an animal that was thought to be extinct until 1953. Uh, in the 70 years since then, uh, we've been running a very successful breeding program, uh, particularly through Perth Zoo in recent years. Now, from 1953 to now, we've bred and released 499 of this tortoise that was thought to be extinct. So the first one to go today will actually be the 500th uh, of these western swamp tortoises released and uh, in watching earlier I've seen that Jake's was the most active so I think Jake should let the 500 tortoise go first. So off you go mate. But our main focus is to get our message out to children. Children are going to determine whether um, threatened species as a whole survive and whether our environment still remains sustainable when they are adults. And we need to teach them that they have a role to play in making sure that uh, the environment stays healthy and that our planet in general stays healthy. We um, decided that we wanted to raise money for some animal and Mrs Cameroon, our science teacher, said how it has to be um, in WA around this area and we went and did some, re did some research and we came back saying let's do the Western Swamp Tortoise. We made a few posters and some of the year sixes made posters as well. We did some colouring and competitions and games that people had to pay a little bit of money of their spare pocket money or spare change or something like that um, to participate. And it's fun organising something um, that's for the wildlife. So what I'm saying is for every uh, child who has any kind of passion uh, for the environment and for the wild for wildlife is to always remember there is always something new to pick up don't say just because oh Robert Boyd was you know 50 odd years ago picked up a tortoise and may, there's nothing more to find these days um, uh, I say no get out there and look under every leaf and in a, in a lake or wherever. It's the stuff to find.